Alchemy. Noun. The medieval forerunner of chemistry, concerned with the transmutation of matter, in particular with attempts to convert base metals into gold, or find a universal elixir. Hello hobbyists and welcome to the Warhanam channel. My name is Ian and in this video we're going to explore the arcane science of turning flat silver into an interesting gold tone using only three paints. Across the Citadel miniatures range there are a great many traditionally gold armour wearing armies. In the grim darkness of 40k we have the noble custodies fighting alongside the secretive Sisters of Silence. In the mortal realms of AOS, Sigmar's golden elites do battle with the shimmering hosts of Slaanesh. And in Middle-earth, fighting in defence of the north, Galadrim elves take on the Easterlings of the Dragon Emperor. These are obviously just a few examples from a few ranges of models that this method could be used for. But it could also provide an interesting alternative scheme on many other primarily metallic miniatures. So grab your water, carbon, ammonia, lime, phosphorus, um, hang on a sec, wrong page. No expenses spared on the uh, audio effects there. Grab your storm hose silver, seraphim sepia and drookie violet and I'll meet you in the lab. Just a quick note before we start. In this video I'll be using the older version of the shade paints. For anyone not aware, Games Workshop changed their shade formulas recently. So if you're following this method using the newer version, results may vary slightly but nothing that can't be tweaked and experimented with. After all, we are arcane scientists. I first experimented with this method when painting a Stormcast army a few years ago, so it seemed only right to demonstrate it on one of Sigmar's chosen warriors, a Vindicta. I started with a black primer, and no, I'm not counting that in my three paints, which is utterly scandalous of course, and I hope we can move past it. Using a dark primer might sound counterintuitive as I'm about to paint a really bright silver on top of it, but I did this precisely because it would show through, and be easy to see how good the coverage of my first paint, Stormhose Silver, is, whereas a grey or white might hide this. As you've guessed, we're going to be starting by applying a base coat of Stormhose Silver in all the areas we want to transmute into gold. I'll be doing this with a brush. But if you have access to an airbrush or even a bright silver rattle can, this will cut down on your time, as you could just do the entire model and paint over any bits you don't want gold later on. On this miniature, I want to hit the plate mail, mask, some of the shield details and part of either ends of the spear. As expected, the coverage after the first coat is a bit patchy and streaky, so once dry we'll apply another coat. That's looking a lot more solid, but there are still a few areas that will need another pass with Stormhose Silver. The rest of this method relies on having a solid, even base coat of the silver, so it's really worth spending time on doing it right. Here we go, a nice solid base coat of silver to work on. I've tidied up a few of the areas I won't be painting in this video with black, which further stretches my claim of three paints, but this is purely for the sake of demonstrating the method clearly and were I batch painting an army off camera, I certainly wouldn't have done this, so I think I can get away with that. Okay, draw your magic circles, it's time to start the transmutation process. We'll be applying Seraphim Sepia over our silver, which will add a yellow brownish filter and begin to give us a pale gold. You don't have to be too super neat, but it's worth keeping an eye on areas where you might get pooling, such as between lobstered segments and mopping up or moving around any build-ups before it begins to dry. OK, our Seraphim Sepia has been applied and completely dried. As you can see, it's given us a really light gold, but for the tone we're after we want a bit more saturation, so we'll be applying a second layer of our shade on top. It's worth noting that you could give things like Citadel Contrast, perhaps Snakebite Leather, or another yellowish brown tone from another paint range out there a go if you just want a one and done approach at this stage. I quite like the level of control you get with a shade though and Seraphim is just a really nice tone. OK, transmutation complete. We've got a richer gold which still maintains a fair bit of brightness but you could absolutely stop there if you wanted. That would be absolutely passable as a decent tabletop level gold. 
But if, like me, you fancy delving a little bit deeper and adding a bit more visual interest, you'll need to grab your pot of Drucky Violet. For me, this is easily one of the most underrated paints in the Citadel range. It's extremely versatile and I find myself using it on almost every miniature I paint. We're going to use it this time as a recess wash, or what's sometimes called a pin wash. We're going to load up our brush with shade, but remove a little bit on the lid to give us a bit more control. We're looking to target all of the recessed areas of the armour, paying attention to round the rivets as well. To me this really helps to add some depth and some interest, turning a fairly clean bright yellowish gold into a more aged or worn one that I think really elevates the look. As with before, you could stop there, but to finish off I like to do a final highlight of our first paint, Stormhose Silver. For models with lots of nice distinct edges like this one, you can use the side of your bristles to catch them, such as on the shoulder pads, and play around with some round specular highlights on the rounder surfaces like the helmet and chest plate. You don't have to do every single edge, just work your way round looking for the areas which would catch the light the most. Now edge highlighting is something that some can find a bit inaccessible for all manner of reasons, or perhaps you simply just don't enjoy it, or you want to speed up the process a bit. If that's you, stick around till the end of the video where I've attempted this final step with dry brushing. But for now, we've done what medieval science could not, and here is our fully transmuted golden boy. For relatively little effort, and only three paints, well okay, four or five if you really insist on taking me to task over the primer and black to tidy up. We've got a nice looking alternative gold that ought to really catch your eye on the tabletop. So now we've applied this method to a single miniature, I thought it would be worthwhile discussing how you could use it over the course of a whole army. As we discussed near the start, it definitely lends itself to armies where gold will be the primary armour colour. I had a dig around in the Warhammer archives and have unearthed some ancient photos from a few years back in the Age of Myth, so apologies for the quality. One of the main strengths of this type of method is the relative speed of it, which really lends itself to painting in large batches. Here's a few fuzzy work in progress shots on a load of units and heroes. The process was really satisfying and you feel yourself making progress really quickly particularly if you can find a way to lay down that silver base coat in a speedier way than by hand. So my main advice is simply, paint this method on as many models in your army as you feel you can. Once it's done, you can then go through each unit and add your details and basing. There's something really nice about picking up a unit and finding the biggest area of the model has already been painted by past you. And here we go, a few shots from the finished Vanguard Stormcast army I took to South Coast GT back in 2018. I definitely feel I've grown as a painter since then, so there are plenty of elements I would alter, but hopefully it just gives you an idea of what this gold method looks like across a whole army. And as promised, here is me with a spare Stormcast body I had in my bit box, which I've painted up to the Dricky Violet recess wash stage and now we're going to hit it with a quick dry brush of Stormhose Silver. And I don't think that looks too bad, it's a decent alternative if edge highlighting isn't for you. Thank you all so much for watching, I really appreciated all the support and feedback from my first video and I've tried really hard to implement lots of your suggestions, particularly with a more close up look at the model, having a brighter less busy painting area to focus attention on the model, and also fixing some sound issues. I'm really keen to keep improving and produce the highest quality of videos I can from the cramped desk in my bedroom, so once again please do let me know what you enjoyed and what I could try to do to continue to push up the quality of these videos. Thank you so much once again and see you next time.